Hi, my name is Chris Hatch, and I'm continuing on with the example of evaluating buying the Subway freestanding restaurant property at Centerville, Utah. So here you can see I'm on my Crexy page, or sorry, excuse me, the listing page for this listing on Crexy. And so one of the next steps is for me to financially underwrite or evaluate, financially speaking, what it would look like to buy this property. So I can see that the purchase price right here is $800 and $36,000. So I know that's my purchase price. I can see that there are 3.7 years left on the lease. Okay. And then I can see that the NOI is 3,196 or a 6% cap rate. So my next step is I'm going to go ahead and just put everything into a spreadsheet because I find it's easiest just to start there. So I'm going to go in here um, and I'm going to go to a building size. This is just a blank Excel spreadsheet flip back here and so it's a 1,358 square foot building can you just put a number in there home separator can you and light in a line we go into to year one year two year three year four I'll drag that out for 10 years I usually run almost everything as a 10 year analysis um, based rental payments. And I know that my NOI is $50,196. $1,196. I know that uh, there is 3.7 years of lease term remaining. And so this rent number will go for the first three years. And then uh, since it's 3.7, I'm just going to round that to three quarters. So I'm basically going to say it's that annual rent times 0.75 plus, and then go back to the cell prior times 1.1 for a 10% rent bump, and then times that by 25%. So this calculation should give you the rent on that three quarter year. So three quarters of the year, you're getting the rent at X. Then the rent bumps 10%, and for one quarter of the year, you're collecting rent at the 10% rent bump, or $51,450.90. Then to get the truth uh, next year, I just go back to the prior base rent times it by 10% because we get a full year. And then so we've got, you know, on that revised rent calculation, right, as this option hits, we know we have the same uh, issue that occurs. Let's see. And we know here in year eight of the lease, we're hitting the fifth year of that option, which again is three quarters of the rent being attributed to one base rent and then one quarter uh, of the year's rent being attributable to the 10% rent bump. So I'm actually just going to go back in here and just copy that calculation. And that should have worked correctly. Just double check our math real quick. Yes, so that kind of one point one. 60,000 looks correct to me. So I'm going to keep moving with that. And then as far as uh, disposition, uh, sometimes when you're looking at year 10, if there's a rent bump right at the start of year 11, you might want to calculate that rent and then anticipate your exit cap rate based on that rent. And the reason being is if, if the rent's going to bump within three months or six months or something like that, most buyers are used to paying for that additional. And then you just escrow the difference in rent payments if they end up closing before the rent anniversary occurs. So I got my numbers in here. Okay, so here's my base monthly rental payments. Let us clean it up some formatting here. I'm sure many of you like me use Excel far too much and you just have to have it working perfectly for you. Okay, now going back to my listing here, this listing is being presented as an absolute net lease. Uh, as I previously stated, one of the very first things that I would want to do at this point is to dive in and figure out, is it truly an absolute net lease? So I would want to get a copy of the lease. I'd want to double check all of the little things, HVAC, little or big things as it might be, HVAC maintenance and replacement, roof repair, uh, maintenance and replacement, uh, roof replacement, you know, everything attached to the roof, parking lot, who's responsible for seal coating the parking lot, keeping the asphalt in good uh, condition, who's in charge of the landscaping, am I in charge of removing the trash or creating a contract with the trash removal company, and then do they reimburse for that? Are there any other reimbursable expenses whatsoever? 
in the event that this is listed as advertised and it truly ends up being an absolute net lease, that what I would do is typically it's always just be able to lease something uh, in the form of reserve factor. And the reason why is because you only have 3.7 years left on the lease. So let's say this tenant is operating and they're fully intending to renew, but you get about one year out, so 2.7 years down the road, and you're right here in this range. And they're like, look, this HVAC unit is failing. You know, it sure be great as if the landlord would just step up and buy us a new HVAC unit. So because of those things, I just always like to have some marginal small factor in here. So let's just go with a minus, uh, point of, minus 2% off the top on the rent here. Now, again, this is your money, right? So it's not like you're paying this out to anyone. Uh, you're not responsible to have to do anything with this. You're just holding this into your account and you're just basically not cash flowing it, right? So you're holding it in your own individual single purpose entity checking account and you're just, just kind of there to kind of keep your balance to figure out, um, you know, what you might need it for. Now, we don't have any other expenses here. We're assuming it's not... Uh, a, there's no loan involved. And so from a cash flow perspective, um, and let's do it, um, estimated cash flow. Uh, we should be good to calculate here. Sum this up. Okay, and take this all the way through. And then we'll go with the top and bottom and bold to kind of make that pop a little bit. Okay, now we're going to talk about capital events. So now we're uh, focused on an IRR perspective. So uh, this is the purchase of the building. And again, we are dealing with a building that's $836,000. So let's just assume we're buying it at list price. And then we have the cash flow from the property. So I would just make this equal to this. And drag it all the way over. Of that A36, of course, is a minus because we're paying it out. Uh, I'll just format that. Okay. Now we have an estimated um, sale price. And we bought this at a six cap. Uh, we got to look at this for just a moment. But in year 10, this lease is basically almost in the exact same position that it was when we bought it. Uh, here we'll actually have 2.7 years of lease term left. Um, so I'm just going to use the same 6% cap rate here in this instance. Um, you know, you can really torture this data however you want and whatever works best for you. Uh, but when I look at this, there are enough variables and factors going here. And B, you know, in my backyard, this property is located about 20 minutes from where I live. I know the trade area, I know the market pretty well. I've worked in this market for 22 years, trading at least properties. And so all instincts tell me a six is probably an appropriate underwrite on my exit here. So I take the NOI in year 10, I divide it by a six cap. And then what I do is I times up my point 0.935. Now I don't anticipate I'll have to pay a 6% commission because this purchase price, you know, is kind of now it's up over probably a million dollars here. And so being over a million dollars, I could probably sneak the commission down to a five, but anticipating that it's a 6% commission, that's where I get the four, 6% uh, deducted out of there. And then my additional half percent is just that last half percent, which is more or less just closing costs, escrow fees, prorated taxes, you know, anything that might not be covered by the tenant, but you know, somehow might come out and impact my sale. So now I have an exit. Okay. So now I can um, show a total return. So I'll sum these up. And we're just going to make this look just like the top section. Okay. So we're just going to format this real quick. Now, I have my cash in is equal to um, minus 836. I have my cash flow is equal to so um, minus 246. I have my cash out is equal to 946. IRR equals IRR. Here and I'm just guessing it's going to be 0 0.18 for about an 18% IRR. Let's see, but uh, you know, far lower. 
the upholstery. So, yeah, of course. Sorry. So uh, here you go. You got an IRR. You got everything you need to evaluate this property. Um, and the way I would look at this in general, and I think the way most let net lease investment um, investors look at deals like this is you are cash flowing this property over 10 years. It's an absolute net lease structure, so that's going to leave you very little in the way of management, oversight. You're not really going to think about this property. You're not going to have to cut the grass. You're not going to have to hire somebody to do things. The tenant is more or less going to take care of everything on the entire property. And then on top of that, you're going to be able to cash flow a very nice return at 8.3% um, you know, in the event that the tenant decides to vacate. Again, I know this property and I feel very comfortable, you know, that in 10 years, this property is worth more than it is today from a rental standpoint. So I think you could actually lift rent and put another tenant in there who would probably pay you more in rent than what Subway is paying. So I think your worst case scenario here is that the tenant performs exactly as advertised and you clip along and get an 8.3%, at 8.37% IRR, uh, which isn't bad. And it's really not a bad metric. One other thing you could add in here as well, just an additional, and I do this sometimes, um, I typically am more focused on IRR than I am on cash flow. Um, but another thing you could do in here as well is just add in and just take the NOI here from the estimated cash flow divided by a negative of what you've outlaid in purchase price. And then this is going to, let's just make sure we freeze this data point and make this a percentage or digits here drag it over and what that gives you is your uh, annual cash on cash uh, return here so starting at a 5 8 ending at a 7 1 not bad for a hands-off asset you don't really need to think about do anything with you can depreciate uh, from the tax standpoint which is nice to get a tax shelter against some of that income so if you enjoyed this uh, give me a follow check out some of my other youtube videos and i appreciate you spending a minute with me thank you good luck investing out there